It all started with my best friend who a few years ago found an ad on Craigslist. It was offering women money to shave all or part of their head. Akashmadur, Patashmadur, Charidike Madur, Ako, Kechi Madur, Shanda, Nami, Hoyechiche, Madumor, Madu Charachai, ay, ay, ay. My body is definitely an instrument for expressing whatever the artist that I'm working with is looking to express or my interpretation of that. Don't be afraid to get close. No? Uh, video. I feel my body is changing all the time. And every year my body is, gets older, but it also gets stronger and more articulate. My sense of who I am or the possibilities of who I can transform into become broader. I grew up in Cincinnati until the age of 12, going to public school, doing a lot of ballet, pretty normal, happy childhood. When I was five years old, my parents started studying with a meditation teacher. And when I was 12, we actually made the move to Jamaica, Queens, New York, to be much closer to that community. And at that point, I stopped going to school. We really weren't supposed to have that much interaction with the outside world. We were kept as sheltered as possible from that, especially the young children, the very few children. Cutting your hair, actually, we were told that your soul was more beautiful if you were a woman with long hair. And if you cut your hair, you lose some of the beauty of your soul. I was very attached to my hair for all of those years. When I was 18, we were asked to leave the community. And I hadn't been permitted to dance during that time. So I started dancing again at 18 and ended up auditioning for a conservatory and getting in. And I've been in New York pretty much ever since. It was late December in 2009, and I was very poor. I was just looking to, to see what I could find, some jobs. It was just like a sentence or two, and it just said, looking for women interested in shaving their hair for $1,000. Okay. And I responded, and he's like, yeah, I just pick a place. It can be public, a public place, and I just need before and after pictures. There'll be a guy there, Jay, to meet you. He'll have half of the money once we agree upon a, a place. And the first time I went, it was Crops for Girls. I thought, well, pff, why not? I mean, I've always wanted to shave my head, and 
I could get a thousand dollars. Like, amazing. I got the contact information. Um, I think at first it was just an email, and uh, I was told this guy's name was Ben. He said that he's at some university in the Midwest, and he needed to find women who would be his subjects, who would shave their head, but he couldn't find any volunteers. So his friend Jay was willing to fund his project. I wanted a faux hawk, but he like went out way too wide. And then he said that I looked like some guy actor in the 80s on television sitcoms. And it really like offended me. I took pictures during for her. And then we came out of the salon at the end and he was there waiting with the money. I find this guy who's Jay and he gets out of his car and you know, he's a tall, thin man with brown hair and he's wearing a business suit. He looks like a conservative businessman. Blue eyes, dark hair, you could meet him anywhere. I said, do you ever get curious about this? He said, I just hand out the money and you know, get paid myself. And then he just left. I actually never saw him in person again after that. He told me, whatever you do, don't tell the person cutting your hair why you're doing it. And don't tell them it's for money. I never asked Ben or Jay if they needed the hair because they never took my hair. Like, I go to the hairdresser and I know him very well. And it's not like someone was coming in and taking the hair later or anything. I thought that it was just a picture thing. The specifics were that it always had to be a number one blade. Number one is very, very, very short. You can see the scalp through that, but it's not completely to the skin. So fast forward a year or two later, and I st start thinking maybe I'd like to do this. So I asked my friend for his email address. Two times we set up a time and place and the guy that was supposed to come just couldn't, couldn't make it that day. I actually sent Ben an angry email like, like, forget it. The reply I got was, what if I just put it, the money in your PayPal account? Sure, then I never have to even meet anybody. I happened to be in Brooklyn and he activated it. He, he sent me the money. There have been five cuts total. The left side of my head shaved for 1,500. Then the right side for another 1,500. The next shave was my entire head and I said I would only do it for $3,000. And he said okay. I was a little offended when I found out that he was offering larger sums of money to my friends. And that was part of what started to turn me off with the whole process. But I realized that he wanted me to do this and therefore I could get more money out of it. I never wanted to say a number, right? He was like, well, give me an idea. I'm like, well, what is it worth? Give me an idea. Well, what is it worth? The most I was ever paid was $8,000. I did make that deal to get designs in my hair. It was probably like 10.30, 11 o'clock at night when I'm doing this deal because it's, it's always right then or, or not happening. Since then, he's offered me 10,000, but I'm waiting for 20, so. It was pretty exhilarating to have my head fully shaved for the first time. I m upset him though because I was so nervous and excited that time. I didn't take any photos during, I only took photos after. And he was furious. The next cut was only for $500, full shave.
but I still wanted to keep him interested and come up with new ways of proposing a, a haircut that could keep it fresh and keep him interested. So I proposed a razor shave. He was interested in that and was willing to go back up to a thousand dollars for that. Even though I trusted the barber that I was going to, there's a feeling of being immobile in the chair because if I move, he could cut me and it would be my fault. That's a, a scary feeling that I'm trapped under this blade. I couldn't help but have a sense of there being an erotic undercurrent to the whole thing because I knew that he was getting some sort of personal erotic pleasure out of this. And to a certain degree, it is enjoyable to be the object of someone's desire. It became apparent to me uh, at some point through all of this process with shaving my head um, that he wanted me to be a lesbian. He wants, he wants that to be part of my transformation. So it was easy for me to be able to tailor my responses in ways that I thought would give him a little bit of what he was looking for. And um, of course I have a lot of female friends who would be willing to play along. Feeling is really nice. Yeah. yeah like, like, <sighs> it was fun to share it with someone because yeah, usually I just go by myself and I'm always a little uncomfortable. Like, is someone going to jump out of the bushes at me? But it was more fun to have a friend there. Oh, but wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I did all the negotiating. I wanted to maintain the role of being in charge. I hear that someone has been taking commission for introducing Ben and or Jay to other women. Ray and Chelsea live together. That's something I hadn't really Yeah, because now they're together. like roommates and they're right. like... They're the hot spot right now. I have a dance job with Shenway Dance Arts, and I have a couple of pieces where it's not required that I have long hair, but it's better for the look and the aesthetic of the piece. My hair is extremely important to me because of my history with partial alopecia, and that was a sense of 
exposure that I never wanted to repeat. It's a little bit. Do you think it's a little lopsided? Even. Yeah, we can. We can see how you know, it's sort of like. Mm. That's the uh, Her head is sick because there's that. See that part of It's fine. Head. Yeah, yeah. Of yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, this is the hair that I grew back after I lost it. Right. Like from when I was 15. So maybe I'll keep it. I'm gonna put it up just so I feel more badass. So. said that it doesn't look like a number one blade was used on Chelsea. Which he, which he cut it a second time. He cut it a second time. So, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll say. He hasn't sent the, the second he half. We haven't gotten the other half of the money yet. But we will. He emailed me like three times asking me to convince her to do more today and that he would be willing to pay more. He would be willing to pay $750 more if she shaved a little more. And I said no. I'm not doing this because I absolutely need it. It was that he wouldn't be willing to agree to work with Corey unless someone new came with her, and I'm willing to go on that adventure with her. He's probably, right now, telling Jay to send us the other part of the money. That's probably what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> Jay will send money, but needs to be shaved with a number one. Great. Okay. Done. It's done. So, we go do that right now? We'll do it right now. Okay. Pohana kariya dititi shampiya shuvanya kariya bhatra Jata bahar kali nai ohi kali prita shehishta matra O gonarayan shunani vedan ahange shimareka Duhe muche diye nil mahankare antare daadaka Pohana kariya dititi shampiya shuvanya kariya bhatra Jata bar kali nahi hoi kali prita shehishta matra O gonarayan shunani bedan ahange shimare ka Duhe muche diye nil mahankare antare daadaka There are thousands. Uh, he claimed over 13,000 songs. Um, of course, some songs were pages and pages of poetry long, and some songs were one word long. And I learned probably about 2,000 of different lengths. Some very short, some very long. And we would sing also, whenever he played sports like tennis or basketball or running, he had a track, a sprinting track, and he would sprint and we would stand along the track and sing while he was doing that. Can you imagine? Can you imagine going for a run and having a small little choir singing to you while you run? <laughs> and we loved it. He loved it. We all have a fear of God. I was afraid of disappointing him. There was a time when I was 17 and we were in Bali and this group of Balinese dancers came to perform for us at the hotel. And for some reason they picked me up out of the audience and brought me on stage with them. 
and started doing these things and I just started following. It was so moving to me and it also reminded me of what it felt like to dance and to move. And that night, my guru said that I was the most beautiful dancer and uh, I was shocked because if anything, I thought he was gonna wag his finger at me, but um, I think he knew that that's who I was. still living a life of discipline and in pursuit of what I'm passionate about and what connects me to a deeper part of myself. I do feel that there are more women shaving parts of their head and their full head. Is she one of his? I don't have the, the gall to ask them, because how rude would that be? There could be dozens of women. I don't know what amount of resources he has, or if it's a group of collected resources that they all go in on it together. I always, you know, thought there might be other groupings. I think it's interesting to him, maybe, that there's just this kind of ecosystem over here and this one over here and he might have control of a whole planetary system. I think I've always imagined him as an eccentric, wealthy man or maybe group of men that are lonely and socially awkward and trying to use this arrangement as a way to entertain themselves and connect with people. The evolution of it has come to a kind of friendly tone. I show up to get my hair cut, knowing that he might be outside. I'm not afraid of him. He's never made me feel like what I was doing was anything to be ashamed of. I haven't been in touch with Jay since the start of the new year, but he sent me an email that said, Happy New Year, how are things going, how's your hair growing out? And I assume that I will eventually send him a picture and be like, I'm getting married, I'm growing my hair out, wedding hair, you know, like, so that he knows where I'm at. The last offer I heard was for $3,000 for not my entire head, but more than I did before. and. At this moment, I'm not willing to do it. I said from the beginning, I'm gonna do this as long as it's good for me. I was proud of myself. And then just kind of having introduced my friends to it and hopefully it's been beneficial to them because I do feel somewhat responsible for passing this unknown variable into people's lives. I can't help, first of all, but be grateful to him. I needed what he was able to give me, and he really hasn't asked for hardly anything in return from me. I assume that he wants the photos for something. What does he want them for? I have no idea. I don't really care, no. I would never send him photos that I would not send my grandmother. 
he never requested anything like of the body or anything in like a weird pose. So I have to say that he wasn't that sketchy or creepy. I send him invitations to all of our galas. I tell him, even on the new year, I'm sending out my thank yous. I wanna thank you, you don't realize what a supporter you are of our company. I use almost all the money that he gave me, I give it back. I pay the musicians, I pay the dancers, I pay for the space, I pay for the studio space. And I told him, I thank you. I don't think it's an extreme perversion or it's not one that I think is, um, hurts anyone physically or emotionally.